So as you can see, the original tech demo is on the right, and the actual game is on the left. And if you look closely at the train, god damn. You've seen the RTX performance numbers for Battlefield 5, but what we haven't seen a lot of yet is a deep dive graphics discussion, and that's what we're doing today. So we're going to be talking about every single aspect of RTX in Battlefield 5, how it's implemented, how it works, and what the significant changes are that you need to pay attention to. So that, this will cover low versus ultra quality settings. We'll be covering screen space versus non-screen space reflections, all different aspects. And joining me is Andrew from our team, who is also a 3D artist and has a lot of experience working with this type of graphics. Before that, this video is brought to you by iBuyPower and their Rush Delivery to You program. The fresh RDY approach gets high-end gaming PCs shipped the same day you order them, and is also one of the only places you can get a 9900K for a reasonable price right now. Systems include the RDY Enthusiast Level Gaming PC with a 2080 Ti, 9900K, and 16 gigabytes of 3200 MHz memory, available with same-day shipping or pickup locally. These systems are built by people who are experienced builders, and component choice makes sense. Learn more at the link in the description below. Let's get this out of the way first. In the tech demo, the iconic demonstration that NVIDIA and DICE had were the eyes on the characters, where you saw fire reflections in the eyes. And so just to answer that question of, did it make it into the game? And you can see the playback of the original demo now. The answer is, well, sort of. There is muzzle flash in the eyes of characters in multiplayer. But Andrew, if we go back and look at the tech demo, the first question here is, are we seeing the same resolution, you think, of or same reflection quality as we see in the final product? This is a really high resolution. Yeah, I was going to say resolution. Well. It's definitely a lot higher um, fidelity than the final game has. It's The final game looks a lot smaller and a lot noisier. And the playback in the tech demo is really high frame rate as well, in the eyes specifically, which is just interesting. It speaks to the qu level of quality being maintained throughout that demonstration. But we're also seeing a whole lot of some kind of visual artifacting. Right. And DICE has um, acknowledged this as well in some of their bug release notes. So they've actually noted that the because we're seeing artifacting primarily uh, around the cheekbone and on the bridge of the nose. Yeah, in their patch notes, they said, artifacting on the face with RTX on. OK, and did they fix it, or did they? Upcom in a upcoming, upcoming update. Fix. OK. So for quality of what we're seeing then in the eyes, it's just a giant red orange flash. Yeah. And there's no, there's no real shape to it. Uh, it is a different type of fire, we'll note. It's a muzzle flash, so different perspective. But it did make it into the game. For the next clip, let's compare low versus ultra. So there's been some discussion as to whether this has any actual visual impact or if there are any differences at all. There are. There are some differences. So we have here a shot of the car, but more importantly, we have a shot of the puddles of water behind it between low and ultra. And the main things that we noticed were some changes in the puddle on the road and some changes on top of the car. And right. So the changes that you're seeing are around places where water is touching bricks, like at the border of the puddle. And we think that's because the roughness of those bricks would be a lot lower compared to the completely dry bricks. OK, so changing the roughness threshold then. This is the, the point at which the material reflects the environment via RTX. And changing the rush, roughness threshold is something we're seeing here. At Ultra, we, we have some numbers here. So you were suggesting anything probably below 0 0.4 roughness per an NVIDIA engineer's recommendation for optimal threshold is probably going to be shown uh, on Ultra. Yes. And then anything below probably 0.1 is going to be shown on low? Yes. OK, so then what does that mean? So around 0.4, like 0.3 to 0.5 is around the roughness of an oily, well, not that oily, but a regular human face's skin, depending on their age and oiliness and wetness. And then anything around 0.1 would be someplace around like shiny, like polished metals somewhere, or like an eyeball. So the scale for roughness is 0 to 1, like a lot of things in graphics. And 0 is going to be the glossiest, right? And then 1 will be the roughest. And uh, this scale is useful. We have a, well, we have another example we can show, actually, that's pretty useful. And this is a plane. So this is a downed plane in the game. And if you look closely at the uh, top corner, the left side of the plane, you'll notice that there's some fire reflection between low and ultra. And that reflection is a lot, 
it's stretched out. It's it's visible over a longer part of the plane with the ultra setting. So then why is that? And how, how does that relate back to what we're saying with roughness and glossiness? So the painted part of the plane would be a lot rougher than the scratched metal surface of the plane where you can see underneath the paint. And so when you turn it to low, it's only focusing on the scratched shiny pieces of metal. And that's because that that's reaching the threshold. Uh, that's going to be lower on the numerical scale, so you're going to be closer to zero right. with the scratched metal surface. Whereas with the painted surface, you're going to be closer to one. Not that close to one, but you're going uh, towards yeah. maybe 0.4 or something like that. So I think our conclusion on this then, for the graphic settings between ultra low and all the steps in between, it's just it's changing the roughness threshold. Uh, again, the point at which the material is sort of reflecting the environment. Yes. And anything below the threshold is, is no longer being reflected, which will conserve resources uh, while still reflecting something somewhere. It's just going to be primarily in the shinier surfaces. OK, let's talk about object culling and reflection culling next. We have a series of examples for this, starting with the train. So for the train reflection, this is with RTX on and set to ultra. And as we sort of step past a distance threshold, you'll see that the sign in the back left corner of the shot uh, is either reflected or not reflected. So this is probably related to how objects are normally cold in games, where it, they're distance-based. And the further away you get, um, you get some pop in or pop out. Right, the game decides that it's not necessary to take up resources for it. So somehow they're also doing that within the reflections of ray traced objects. I think the most interesting thing about this is that you can see what's behind the hotel sign when it's gone. Right, yes. It's not like it's, uh, it's, it's information that's given to you up until the point that you're punished for having too high of a graphic setting. So for the fire reflections, uh, we're looking at some screen space versus non-screen space detail here. And when you're pointing the camera down, what's, what's happening? Well, so the weird thing is that this is still RTX on on Ultra, but it's acting as if it's a screen space reflection. Uh, when the fire goes out of frame of the camera, then it pops away as if it was a screen space reflection. But it, everything else is still being ray traced. So it's just a, an oddity, I suppose. Yes, and we see a lot of this where uh, we actually we have some other examples in here, like talking about the boats in the water, for example, for screen space versus non-screen space. So what's what's going on here in terms of screen space reflections? So here you can see as you dip the camera down to where the boats are out of frame, then the reflections also get cut off at that exact point. But the boats are still being rendered because their shadows are still there. And that goes for everything in the entire game. Not even in this game, just death, that's how screen space reflections work in all games. And you can also see in uh, some other clips where the reflection is occluded by another object, there's some artifacting in the reflections as well. And it's not just for large objects. You can see with the paper too, flying yeah, around. Just the tiny little specks that are causing very large streaks in the water that shouldn't be there. Yes, and those streaks are because the object is occluding the water as it's moving over it. And we have a, a bit of a latency on the update for where the object is versus uh, what it's occluding. So, is this then, if there's no traditional way to fix that, is this something that RTX can solve? I feel like this is basically what RTX is all about. They're trying to get rid of these small artifacts that have been in games for decades now. Yeah, it's just, it's very expensive in terms of resources to do this. Right. Which is the downside that you all see. Uh, so we have an example here from another, what game is this? This is uh, Dragon Quest Eleven. Okay, Dragon Quest. So we have an example of screen space reflections in here. And uh, this is something we've talked about before. You'll notice that the window is reflecting the front of the character when the char character is facing the camera. So why is that? The reflection doesn't know anything besides what's on screen. So it doesn't know what the back of the character looks like when the back of the character is facing away from the camera. Yes, hence, hence the name screen space reflection. So what we're showing here then is there's the window behind us. Right. And the player is crawling through the window or boarding it up or something. It actually, it ran past, or not it, the player, they ran past me to the right to go up to the window. But this is, I feel like this is an interesting thought for competitive play. Yes. So how, so 
Would it be unfair if you could see around corners or behind you in ways that other players yes, can't with RTX on? Yes, that is on? unfair. That, okay. is, that is a definition of unfair. I think this is something that will, if there's any kind of competitive or esports play emerging around this, it'll have to be normalized for. There'll have to be a set of rules for, you know, banning or allowing it. I don't know. I don't know. That's the thing. I don't know how. It's beneficial here because I could see you camping in a corner and just looking at the painting to try and figure out what's going on behind you or something around a corner. Right. But at the same time, that's probably not the most effective way to play the game either. That's true. Probably more effective to be out completing objectives. So maybe it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. But certainly in some games, I could see, like in camp happy games, I could see this being an unfair advantage. Or like if you're hiding behind cover and there's a car on your side of the cover and you can look into the car to see like a wide angle view. Right. You can see in front of you and behind you. Yeah, that that's like that wouldn't really be necessary in third person shooters, but in a first person shooter like this, it would m make a large difference. Potentially, yeah. Uh, so next item here, we have some ice, and this is a an example of where traditional screen space reflections actually are not present when RTX is off. Right. So RTX on, we get the reflections in in the ice. And I don't know, is there anything special about these or abnormal we want to point out, or are they they just reflections? They're just reflections. And then you turn off RTX and you get this, which is just a, a flat surface. Right. And I honestly don't have any explanation for why they wouldn't use screen space reflections here. Because they could. Maybe artistic choice or maybe they overlooked it. I don't know. There's a lot of things that right. could have happened. Those windows were interesting, is that these buildings are like way out of average player map area. So the fact that these windows have RTX on means that it's just like a blanket rule across all surfaces. Right. And it doesn't, just to be clear here, if you're having a flashback to our Final Fantasy 15 coverage, we're not saying that this is being rendered at all times. Right. We're just saying that it's being rendered when you are near the object, even if it's out of bounds of play. Uh, so, yeah, just some kind of blanket rule across all windows or something. I think it's across all services. I don't think they're going through and saying, like, this building should have RTX right, and okay. this object should have RTX. Just... So just check all services for what? Roughness? Right, yes. So just do a roughness check against everything and see if it falls within the threshold for ultra low, whatever your setting is. R this is RTX ultra, but there's no reflections anywhere in the river of anything. Like, <laughs> we're looking straight down at the water. We should be able to see the bridge in the river right now. Definitely should be able to see the bridge. But uh, anywhere that you look, it's it's not reflect. It's not even screen space reflections. It's just no reflections, like the ice. But this is RTX Ultra. So then, why why is this? I mean, is it how how granular is the implementation? I guess is it? Uh, oh, we missed that object. That doesn't seem like a good way to implement it. Right. Like so if if those windows that were way out of bounds had. Right. Uh, ray tracing, then... This probably should. Let's get back to the train that we had in the intro where the player in the tank ruined my shot. So this was shown heavily in NVIDIA's tech demo, and it came out looking a bit different. So you disable RTX completely. Uh, NVIDIA's tech demo showed some extremely blurry, kind of weird reflections. Yeah, very blurry and very clear. At the same time. Right. Well. <laughs> Yeah, clear is in like very opaque-ish reflections. Right. Yes. Yes. Very opaque. So it's, you don't have as much transparency in these windows. So the tech demo, if you're going solely based off of that, it does look like RTX off is worse than it is in reality, which is unfortunate. Now that doesn't mean Nvidia did something evil. Dice probably prepared most of the demo. Uh, it could also be that it was early enough in development that they hadn't finished it. If you want to give them the benefit of the doubt. But ultimately, it's relevant. It makes RTX off look worse than it is, and that has happened several times over the course of promoting RTX, where you get features, uh, you get gameplay showing games without even traditional faked lighting, which is just disingenuous. So all this noise is being caused because since the water surface keeps moving, it's not having enough time to solve for the what the correct reflection would be with only having one sample per pixel, which is hardly anything. Yes, that is very limited. And so when you go back to screen space reflections, since it doesn't have to do any of that, the water, the, the noise is completely gone. 
the water looks clear, but th there's nothing reflected in the water anymore. Yeah, and depending on your perspective here, off might look better than on if you really hate noise. I, on does have more reflections clearly, but it's also just blasted with noise. So uh, well, that might be a quality of life thing to keep in mind, I guess, if you want to debate over whether or not you think that's worth it. But RTX overall then, the implementation, I mean, what do we, what do we think about it here? It's clearly the performance impact is massive. Hopefully this video helps people understand why uh, it's massive in some ways. There are clearly also some anomalies, like we don't understand why that bridge wasn't reflected. Or why there's no reflections in uh, the ice with RTX off. Right, why there's no screen space reflection with the ice. Uh, or why in the tech demo that train looked worse than it does in the end game. We can maybe give them the benefit of the doubt on that. I feel like my conclusion of how RTX is implemented is that it is always very noisy. Still noisy, and just to really be clear here, that's with film grain off. Yes. If anyone wants to comment and say, oh, you guys are idiots, you had film grain on, no. It's just noise from RTX. So then is there, first of all, uh, we're probably going to see similar noise, I think, in other games. Yes. I don't think this is Battlefield specific. And then is there a solution to, because the noise to me is probably, other than the performance, is the worst part of the current RTX implementation. So what is, is there a path to a solution? I think NVIDIA is doing this also. They need to improve their denoising technology. I think that's where the source of most of this is. Because if you, even if you just take, start taking two samples per pixel, which is still nothing, now you're doubling the amount of resources yes. that you have to use. For that specific function, yeah. For RTX processing. Right. Yes, the, and if, if that's happening when your frame rate's already dropping uh, significantly, like halved, yes. th then asking for another 100% uh, another increase in sampling is, is a large ask yes. for NVIDIA. So that's our recap. Hopefully that helps you understand the graphics better and the technology behind it, how it works, why, uh, why the performance is, is bad, but also you know, what it is uh, NVIDIA needs to improve on, because this is not a perfect implementation, despite uh, the performance cost, speaking subjectively here, does not seem necessarily worth the visuals, especially because NVIDIA has been driving 4K so hard. I mean, on stage, Jensen said, this is the first 4K 60 FPS GPU ever, even though they launched their 1080 Ti with the same phrasing, and you can play any game with like a, a 1080 or something, 4K60, you drop the settings enough. But given all of that marketing, now they've got RTX where you are basically playing 1080p60, not 4K, definitely not 4K in this game. So it's, it's a step backwards in resolution and performance. Uh, and so you're sacrificing resolution, you're sac sacrificing anti-aliasing because you need to give up other graphics options in order to gain RTX. And that does not necessarily seem worth it, depending on uh, really what your end goal is for the game. Especially if it's just, just weird for a shooter anyway. Yeah, something so uh, high action. High action and single-minded. You know, your, your real goal is, is uh, competitive. It's not like it's an RPG or something where the goal is immersion. It's right. a, bit, a bit odd overall, but there's what we think. You can check out uh, more coming up soon. Subscribe for that as always. Go to store.gamersnexus.net to help us out directly and patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help out there. Thank you for watching. We'll see you all next time. <laughs>